I will give you the flail of hell. Now back in the old days, the flail was an important thing for threshing straw, you know. Knocking the grain off the end of the straw. A thresher, oh thresher, oh will you tell to me? How do you maintain your wife and family? Your work it is heavy and your wages are so small. How do you ever keep your family at all? Threshing with a flail. But this was no ordinary flail, as the devil was quick to point out. But this is no ordinary flail. <laughs> you strike it on the ground. Whap, whap. Money will come out of the earth. You will be rich beyond the dreams of avarice. After seven years, I will ask of you three questions very simple. If you can answer me, parfait, vous êtes libre and other signs of the zodiac. <laughs> but if not, <laughs> then you will serve me forever. <laughs> Laba. Well, that sounded like a great deal to the soldiers. They signed on the spot. The devil xeroxed it under his big wings and faxed it back to hell. <laughs> Them hanging on his long scaly back, he soared off over the inscrutable freeway networks of the North American continent and he put them down just outside Hamilton. <laughs> And he vanished with a slight smell of boiled cabbage. <coughs> <laughs> the eldest soldier picked up the magic flail, the flail of hell, and he struck it on the sidewalks of Hamilton. Whap, whap. Money came out of the ground in sheets. Five dollar bills, six dollar bills, seven dollar bills. They stuffed their hats, the shirts, the trousers, the pockets. They went away into Hamilton and they got themselves a wonderful meal. <laughs> Well, they were living high and wild, you know. But as the years went by, the thought of the devil's three questions began to weigh heavier and heavier on their mind. And even the six big bottles of Thunderbird they were having for their breakfast wasn't cheering them up the way it used to. <laughs> One day, the eldest soldier was strolling through the verdant groves of Hamilton. <laughs> where he'd seen a little house he'd never seen there before, all made of old crates and the roof was made out of hammered out tins of McEwen's export. <laughs> and sitting on her step there was an old woman, had a pair of teeth, made a loop in the air in front of her, round her waist twice, and in and out the buckles of her shoes. <laughs> and she said, Morning, dear. I am the queen of the universe. Look at my lovely house here. I've got rooms for every day of the week. I've got staircases for every hour of the day, all lined with porphyry, jacinth, chrysoprase, chalcedony, and other new age crystals. <laughs> Only one thing that bothers me, dear, is I lie in my bath of ass's milk because a bleeding draught from somewhere gets up my royal neck. It's giving me a touch of majestic sciatica. <laughs> I wonder if you mind seeing if any of my ruby slates may have slipped. And he looked up at where the old red tins have nailed up on the roof there. He said, yes, your majesty, I can see some of your ruby slates have slipped. And quick as a flash, he pulled from his pocket an old flattened out tin of McCune's. He knew it would be useful for something one day. With a hammer he had in his sock and some tacks he'd used when we keeping his teeth from knocking into each other. He welded another couple of tins out. He said, oh, yes, big improvement. By the way, you look a little bit troubled. What's bothering you then? moving right along. <laughs> and he explained all about the devil's three questions. And she said, <laughs> The devil, dear. The devil. Don't worry about him. I'm his grandmother. <laughs> Besides, he always asks the same questions, and I could tell you the answers. Shall I? <laughs> and she did. 
You don't like that way of ending it? <laughs> no, 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 that's a really modern way of ending it. It's sort of zen, you know, like the sound of one hand clapping and all that. <laughs> all right, well, I'll end it the Western way then. <coughs> Me and my beautiful wife, Bina, were coming through this part of the US that they call the Bible Belt. And we happened to be staying in a small town called Charlotteburg, Charlotteville. There's a lot, a lot of towns called Charlotte something down there. She was a very, very popular girl, that Charlotte. She got around all over that place. And we're staying in this motel. It was one of these motels that's got like a racial slur for the sign because it's got a wee picture of a Highlander with bagpipes to show you how cheap it is. <laughs> are mean, mind you, but I've got this friend from Aberdeen. I went to see him the other day. He was taking all the wallpaper off his walls. I says to him, are you redecorating? He says, no. Moving house. <laughs> well, anyway, we're, we're stuck in this motel. You know, nothing to do. You're looking on the television that was late at night, Channel 28, nothing Channel 29, nothing Channel 30, nothing 31, nothing Channel 32, nothing Channel 33, nothing Channel 34, nothing Channel 35, nothing 36, nothing Channel 37, nothing Channel 38, nothing 39, nothing Channel 40, Channel 41! 24 hour red hot gospel telethon <laughs> in aid of Oliver North. <laughs> now this hot gospeler had something to say on the subject of the devil that I'd like to share with you. <laughs> Now, I'm always reminded, I'm always like the showmanship of some of these gospelers, you know, but I'm always reminded a bit of this old story this Welshman told me when I first moved to live in West Wales in the 60s, you know. He used to say that when he was a young man, he was out working on the boats, you know, going out through the North Sea, just him, two or three of the crew and the skipper on board, you know. Something went wrong with one of the engines, you know, they had to run for port across the wind, you know, so the skipper sees these big waves starting to break over the gunnels and sees his welly and left and right, whoa, into the water. The skipper's going, oh, my damage is a do worse thing. Noises. Do you not know any psalms? I says, no, Captain. He says, well, McTavish, he says, what's the first second for sure? He says, do you not know any prayers? I says, no, Captain. He says, well, do something religious. As quick as a flash, I took off my hat and picked up a collection. <laughs> now, this red hot gospeler down there in Charlotte, something or other. He had this to say on the subject of the devil. Now he said this. <laughs> if you ain't never met the devil now, face to face, sir. <laughs> I say now, if you ain't never met the devil now, face to face, sir. I mean face to face, sir. <laughs> it's cause you're going the same way. <laughs> now, you, now you know what they say, heaven for peace, but hell for conversation. <laughs> so just in case you ever need them. I am going to now relay to you the traditional answers to the devil's three questions. Handed down in the Scots-Irish heritage and brought by me to you here tonight in Bathurst Theatre Toronto. You lucky, 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 lucky people. <laughs> the devil will say, when you are my servants, what will be your meat? With what knife will you cut it? And from what cup will you drink your drink? And the answers are... In the North Sea there floats a dead horse, that'll be our meat. And in the North Sea there floats a dead whale, its rib will be our knife. And in the North Sea there floats a dead cat, and its skull will be our crystal cup. Some say the devil's dead, devil's dead, devil's dead. There's some say the devil's dead and buried in Kirkcaldy. There's some say he rose again, rose again, rose again. There's some say he rose again and danced the healing lady. There's some say the devil's dead, and some say the devil's dead. As I am say the devil's dead and buried in Killarney. 
some say heroes again, some say heroes.